Last week, I got my very first Bitcoin miner. I can now mine Bitcoin in the comfort of my own home. This miner is cheap, quiet, and produces very little heat. It's actually running right behind me, and I can barely even hear it. This miner is the Apollo BTC miner from Futurebit. In this video, I'll give you an overview of the Apollo BTC miner specs. I'll show you where you can purchase this miner. We'll review my first seven day profitability analysis with this miner. We'll go over a future profitability scenario analysis. We'll review some of the pros and cons I see with this miner. And then finally, I'll give you my thoughts on whether I think this is a good miner for people to buy. And as always, this is not financial advice. Do your own research before purchasing a cryptocurrency miner. All right, let's go through the specs of this miner. So this is a compact all-in-one Bitcoin miner, and it mines either Bitcoin or an SHA-256 algorithm equivalent cryptocurrency, such as Bitcoin Cash. It includes six core CPUs with four gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte of SSD storage, and that's so that the miner can sync to the Bitcoin blockchain. It comes pre-installed with a Bitcoin node if you get the full version. And then it has three different operating modes, Eco, Balance, and Turbo mode. Uh, it's terahash mining capability is anywhere between 2 and 3.8 terahash per second. It consumes um, a low amount of electricity, anywhere between 125 watts at Eco mode and 200 watts on Turbo mode. It can also be used as a full desktop computer if you wish, and you can connect various different peripherals to it. Now this miner currently is available to purchase. They have additional batch four units available and it shows here it'll ship between two and three weeks from your order date. Now there are four different options for purchasing this miner. I personally went with this full node package. Um, this includes a one terabyte NVMe SSD drive, which lets you sync the entire Bitcoin blockchain to your miner. It also includes a 200 watt power supply with your miner. Now this is the most expensive option out of the four, but I personally uh, did not want to connect my miner to a personal home computer, so having the separate SSD drive just made it easier for this miner to use. The second option is that full node, but with no power supply. Um, I personally, for a lot of my cryptocurrency miners, like to use my own power supply. I'll link the one I prefer to use in the description below if you're interested in checking it out. All right, the next option is their standard option. This is the, the cheapest option of the four. Um, this just includes the miner. It doesn't include a power supply and it doesn't include the SSD storage. So you would have to hook this miner up to your own personal computer so that you could uh, sync it to the blockchain. And then finally, the last option is that standard option, but with a power supply included. So if we go here up here to the top, here are the different prices of um, the different options. So this is the full option that I purchased for $8.99. You can get that same option for $75 cheaper if you exclude the power supply. And then you have the standard with the power supply of $599 and the standard without power supply is $524.99. So I would, I would caveat, if you're not super tech savvy, it may be easiest to go with the full node package because uh, in that case, it's really a plug and play miner and the setup is not much different than your traditional mini box miner. So I'll share a link to the Futurebit website in the description below if you're interested in purchasing this miner or looking into it further. So setting up this miner is really easy. It's a uh, pretty much the same process you would go through with any mini box miner. Uh, you plug the miner into a power supply make sure it's powered on. And then you plug in an ethernet cord into the back of the miner so that it has an internet connection. You find the local IP address of your miner on your local network. You type it into the address bar here, and then you get into the dashboard. Then you input the pool that you wanna use for this miner. I personally use pool in for um, this miner, but there's many Bitcoin pools available out there. So choose the one that best works for you. And then you're basically all set up. They do have a nice dashboard here where you can review the, the specs of your miner. You also have the option to change the hash rate for this miner. You can go between eco, balance, and turbo mode. But one thing to caveat is the eco mode is the most efficient. And at these balance and turbo modes, you're actually using much more power for uh, only an incremental amount of hash rate. I did a comparison of the three different modes on my miner. I tested them each for about a half an hour each. You can see here eco mode, your hash rate's coming in at just over two terahash per second. It does run at the lowest temperature. Um, it's using 118 watts. You can see here the efficiency of the the miner is the best under this mode. You're getting 58.7 watts per terahash. 
Uh, when you go to the balanced mode, you're getting about 2.43 terahash per second. You're using quite a bit more power and your wattage per terahash does increase to 62. And then finally your turbo mode, um, you're getting just over three terahash per second, uh, but you're using quite a bit more power and your watts per terahash is 64.8. Um, so really I think the only time where you'd wanna be using these turbo modes is if we were in a big bull run, um, where the price of Bitcoin was appreciating substantially, then it make more may make more sense to use one of either the balance or the turbo mode. But I think for most people at this point, the eco mode is probably the, the best bet for you. And right, next, let's look at the profitability of this miner. So you can see here, here's my revenue history for my first seven days mining with this miner. You can see my average Bitcoin mine per day is point, we have five zeros and 839. And, uh, Bitcoin price of 20,000 per Bitcoin, we're looking at a revenue per day for this miner of currently about 17 cents. So really not a super lucrative miner at this point, and really we'd have to see a substantial increase in the price of Bitcoin to see um, this miner really generate any substantial money. So you can really think of this miner more as a novelty. Um, it doesn't have a huge power input and it's really not gonna be a big money maker for you. Next, let's go through an analysis of the revenue and the electric expense for this miner. So I purchased my miner, I got the full node package. Uh, with shipping, it was just under $927. Uh, like we mentioned, the average hash rate is 2.01 terahash per second. So we're using 118 watts of power, which really isn't a lot of power for uh, a cryptocurrency miner. So our watts per terahash is 58.7. Like we mentioned, our revenue per day for our first seven days was uh, 17 cents per day. If we look, our electric expense per day is coming in at 34 cents per day at a 12 cent per kilowatt hour rate. And how I did that is I inputted into this electricity cost calculator I found, uh, 119 watts of power at a 12 cent kilowatt hour, uh, running 24 hours a day. Uh, we're looking at a cost per day of 34 cents. So based on that electric expense, this miner is actually losing 17 cents per day at uh, current prices. So what Bitcoin price would we need for this miner to break even each day? Well, I calculated uh, we would need just over a $40,500 Bitcoin price for this miner to be breaking even at a 12 cent per kilowatt hour electric rate. Or on the other side, what electric rate would we need to break even today at $20,000 Bitcoin? And we're looking at a 6 cent per kilowatt, kilowatt hour electric rate, which is a very low rate. Um, especially for people in residential areas. I did a comparison of this miner against uh, a popular larger Bitcoin miner, uh, the S19 Pro, 110 terahash, um, at a purchase price of $5,400. You can see this miner is still profitable at this point at a 12 cent per kilowatt hour rate, um, and it really is still profitable until we hit 18,600 Bitcoin or um, if you have a higher electric rate, this may also not be profitable. Um, but the thing with these uh, larger Bitcoin miners is these are very loud and they produce a lot, a lot of heat and they're not really um, optimal to be running from your home unless you've got a very uh, accommodating spouse. Personally, I'm extremely bullish on Bitcoin long term. I think when we look out multiple years from now, I think we're going to see substantially higher Bitcoin prices um, than we currently see today. I know it can be hard to be bullish, especially now when we're in the midst of a bear market and we're sitting at under $20,000 of Bitcoin. But I wanted to put together a scenario analysis of what the profitability of this miner would look like if we were to see a million dollar Bitcoin price five years from now. So if we were to see a million dollar Bitcoin price five years from September 2nd, 2022, uh, we would have mined 0 0.0153 Bitcoin over those five years. Now that is not accounting for any potentially mining difficulty increases that we would see over that time. Um, but the value of those coins that we had mined would be worth $15,309. Um, five years electricity expense costs at a 12 cent per kilowatt hour rate come to $620, less our minor purchase price of $926. You're looking at a net profit of $13,761 or a return on investment of 1,485%. 
So obviously this scenario may seem quite unrealistic at this point, especially since we're only sitting at $20,000 Bitcoin today. But I think you need to realize this five years is a very long time from now and a lot of things can change over the next five years. So I think this is a scenario that's important to keep in mind to just look at the potential upside uh, that you could see in Bitcoin and the impact it would have on this miner. Next, let's go through some of the pros and cons I see with this miner. We'll start off with the pros. Uh, the first pro is ease of use and setup. Uh, this really is a plug and play miner. There's really no needing to manage it. It doesn't go on and offline, and it is really easy to set up. Uh, next, sound and heat. Uh, this miner produces very little sound or heat. I have it running uh, off to the side behind me, and I really don't notice it. Uh, number three, when you're running this miner and you're running a full Bitcoin node, you're helping to support the Bitcoin network and the decentralization of that network. And then finally for pros, uh, which I think is pretty cool um, and maybe more of a novelty of this miner, is you're actually mining Bitcoin. Uh, you may not be mining very much Bitcoin, but there is something to be said where you're actually being able to mine the first crypto, the first successful cryptocurrency and helping to support that cryptocurrency long term. All right, next, let's go through some of the cons I see. The big con I see is this miner is unprofitable at current prices. So it may not make sense for a lot of people to purchase this miner um, because you're really losing money each day. And if you really want to get exposure to Bitcoin, you should really just purchase Bitcoin as opposed to losing money when your electric expense exceeds the mining output of the miner. And then the next con I see is the purchase price is relatively high. Um, at just under $1,000 for the full node package. Um, it is quite expensive when you're considering that this miner is not profitable. So I wanna to touch a little bit more on the unprofitability of this miner. So obviously this is not financial advice, but in my opinion, it would be horrible at financial advice to recommend that someone purchase this miner, given that it's not even close to being profitable. Just because I choose to run an unprofitable Bitcoin miner doesn't mean you should too. I wanna to lay out some of the reasons why I personally choose to still run this miner. First, the losses that I'm incurring for running this miner are minimal. Now, I know that is not a very good reason. Number two, by running this miner, I'm helping to support decentralization and to support the Bitcoin network. Number three, I'm confident in the price of Bitcoin in the future will appreciate substantially, which will make this miner profitable for me. So really for most people, I think this miner should be considered more of a novelty at this point, but I think it is pretty cool to have, and, I, and that's why I'm enjoying running it so far. If you have any questions or comments about this miner, uh, let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this content, please remember to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and goodbye.